Day. It's a day which supposedly highlights the plight of 795 million undernourished people in the world. To talk more about this, I'm joined in studio by David Orr, the communications officer for the United Nations World Food Program. David, thank you very much for joining us. So this is a staggering figure. Uh, break it down for us in terms of what kind of numbers we're seeing in southern Africa, so regional food insecurity, and what it actually means, or what are the indicators uh, that a, a region is undernourished? Well, in this region, we estimate at the moment there are more than 13 million people who are food insecure. That means basically that they don't know where their next meal is coming from. Okay. And that's as a result primarily of the failed harvests we've seen ac right across this region due to drought and other erratic weather conditions. All right. Uh, well, touching on that, I would imagine that factors such as global warming have been catalysts for these numbers. Have these numbers been growing? It varies. I mean, the sort of um, extreme weather events that we've experienced in this region have been recurrent over the last few decades. Uh, we're, in, we're seeing, um, I, I, I think it's fair to say, an increasing sort of uh, amount of, of drought in some countries like Mozambique, Malawi, flooding. Um, so, so these things are uh, often related to climate change, as you indicate. Um, are they very much a feature now of, uh, of life, I guess, right across the Southern Africa region. Okay, so what needs to be done to, to counter this? Well, a lot of things need to be done. Um, we need a lot more um, investment in social protection to make sure that the most vulnerable people don't go hungry. Um, investment, particularly in agriculture, I think, okay. to make sure that smallholder farmers and so on can get their produce to market. Um, and become more economically uh, resilient. Sustainable, yeah. Exactly. Um, but then to heighten public awareness around something like this, does World Hunger Day, I mean, it's a day of public recognition, does it drive awareness or does more need to be done? Well, I think what we're saying is that we're probably the first generation ever where poverty and hunger are, are beatable. Um, where this is now the first year ever that uh, poverty has been below 10% uh, of the global population. You mentioned 795 million hungry people around the world, but that's two, 200 million fewer than there were uh, at the turn of the century. So we're basically saying that we have the knowledge, we have the tools to beat hunger, that by uh, the year 2030, that's in another 15 years, that we could if we can overcome all the challenges, uh, reach uh, a situation where there are no more people living in extreme hunger. Okay, so take us through some of the challenges. I know you mentioned extreme weather conditions uh, being a catalyst towards the growing numbers of uh, food insecurity in regions, but what are some of the other challenges? I think the big challenges are probably um, global economic growth or lack of. Uh, volatile financial markets, conflict obviously in countries like Syria where we've seen huge numbers of refugees spilling out over the borders into neighboring countries and mm. Europe. Um, obviously conflict in Africa as well in countries like uh, Democratic Republic of Congo and mm. Somalia and so on. Um, those are some of the, the major factors, uh, unemployment of course, particularly mm. youth unemployment which is so big in, in, in our country, region. It's a big issue, yeah. And then, David, uh, critically speaking, if we look at the Sustainable Development Goals, or the, as they were known, the Millennium Development Goals, if we take those into consideration, are these goals being met or aren't they? Well, more than half the countries monitored uh, met the Sustainable, uh, the Millennium Goal on halving poverty, for example, in this region um, between the turn of the century and, and this year, Malawi, Mozambique, are countries that, that really reduced poverty, uh, sorry, hunger. Uh, as well as poverty. And um, so, yes, in theory, if we keep pushing, if there's the right commitment from governments and partners across the, across the globe, we're saying that basically we can uh, look at, at reaching that sustainable development goal, that global goal of ending poverty by, by 2030. And if I had to explain to someone, very briefly, we've run out of time, but if I had to explain to somebody, today is World Food Day, what were the main factors that I would need to explain to them to tell them about World Food Day? 
It was a day that was established by the UN, um, I think in 1981, basically to draw attention to the, to the issue of food security worldwide. It's a way just of concentrating people, people's minds on the, on the fact that so many people still live in, with hunger. As a, as oh, malnourished. A, exactly. All right, David, thank you very much. Uh, David, all the spokesperson for the UN World Food Programme, thank you for coming in.